Hello and welcome to another episode of Stories from the Toy Shelf Unscripted. And this is something a little bit different. So I know haul videos are pretty common on YouTube, but for me, this, is, this will be a first. And I don't normally do hauls, but last week, I actually went on a vacation, a trip to Japan, uh, Osaka to be more precise. And this was my very first time traveling to Osaka. I'd been to Tokyo a couple of times, you know, pre-pandemic, but I was traveling with a family, my wife and two little girls. And so I figured, you know, obviously the trip was for them, right? So we did a lot of Pokemon, as you can tell, we did a lot of Pokemon shopping. Uh, that was the number one thing in our agenda. That and, you know, Universal Studios where you got Nintendo Land, which my two daughters are a big fan of, Mario and Harry Potter, which my wife is a huge fan of. As for me, yeah, we did manage to go to do a little toy shopping, my toys. And so that's what this video is all about. So it's not so much a guide, a shopping guide, a toy shopping guide to Osaka because, you know, traveling with two little kids, you know, you don't really get much done and you just had to pick your battles. But I'll just give a quick rundown of where I went and what I found in those places. So without further ado, let's get started. So Osaka. So let's start with the most basic ones, which are these guys. So like I said, my two daughters are huge Pokemon fans. And so obviously the first stop on our trip was to the Pokemon Center where they got a whole lot of stuff. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, these aren't all Pokemon, but yeah, so a lot of these miniatures. I will admit though that even if I don't know much about Pokemon, I do know Psyduck and Psyduck is my favorite Pokemon. So I said I wanted to get myself a miniature Psyduck. So that's mine. Um, everything else here aside from the Pokemon, well, even some of the Pokemon. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Japan or um, what Gashapon are. So if you're not familiar with Gashapon, um, it's a brand of capsule toys. So capsule meaning they're toys that fit inside these like little capsules, right? So no, Ooh, Pikachu. And basically, they are sold in vending machines all around Japan. You know how in Las Vegas, you have slot machines wherever you go, not just in the casinos, but in the groceries, in the drugstores, whatever. Well, same thing with Japan. Like practically everywhere, or at least in Osaka, practically everywhere you go, there's there are gash, gashapon machines everywhere. It's, it's a cultural thing, right? They're on the streets, everywhere. And these capsule toys can be anything from obviously Pokemon to random things. I mean, well, this is a like a Japanese, I don't know what it's a character. I remember as a kid when I was really small, my, my older brother came from Japan and he had one of these things. So this brought back some nostalgic memories when I saw a, a gashapon machine dispensing these guys. So I had to get it. But I mean, they dispense figurines to like keychains and god knows whatever anything that can fit in the capsule you know so <laughs> even weird even weird ba stress babies you know i just saw this guy oops, but i just saw this guy and said you know i, I gotta have him like i mean he's a squishy toy he's got like some sort of beads inside him and he's pretty cool my, my, my daughter got a kick out of him but i thought he was pretty cool so yeah even this stuff you know japan does come up with some weird stuff i don't know if this is an actual character the cutesy stuff like bunnies my younger daughter my fi my five-year-old wanted this one and cats and bumblebee suits right so yeah uh starting with the simplest gashapon Okay, so let's get started with the main stuff. So again, this is a very modest haul as the trip was really for the kids and all the Pokemon that they wanted. But as for me, I did my research and for those not in the know, if you're in Osaka and you're looking for toys, uh, the one place you want to go is this place called Den Den Town. So it's, I guess, in the main... It, it was it was like a 5-10 minute walk from our hotel, which was fortunate. And there are different shops. So I did my research on YouTube. There are a lot of toy hunting guides and basically I was pointed to just three or four shops, right? I mean, I mean, there are a lot of toys, a lot of Japanese stuff, but if you're looking for the mainstream ones like Transformers, uh, Marvel Legends, you know, there are only very specific stores you can go to that are worth your time. So anyway, the first store I got to was this place called Jungle. It seems so bland heavy, talking with nothing there. So let's have baby here. So Jungle. So actually there are two jungles. They're right across each other. One specializes specifically on mechs like Gundam and, you know, model model kits, plastic model kits, robot. Um, but on the other side, you got more variation and where you'll find a lot of the Marvel Legends stuff and, and whatnot, um, US stuff. And the choices are pretty random, right? You'll see the latest stuff going for a lot of money, like high prices, but then you'll see a lot of the some older random stuff that aren't really in retail anymore for pretty decent prices. So it's really what you'll find. I myself didn't really find anything in Jungle, but if you're in Osaka, I would suggest going. These, these, these stores are all along one street and they're all very near each other. So just do your Google Maps and you'll find all of them. No, 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 no problem, right? So Jungle, 
Tango. Uh, oh, my kids did get a couple of Tamagotchis. If, I don't know if you know what those are, but you know, they're those little pets and a damn thing kept me awake one night. But anyway, so yeah, Jungle. After that, I went to this store called Hero Gang. Uh, and in Hero Gang, I actually found this guy. So Star Wars is pretty big in Japan and I am a Black Series collector. But I will also, every now and then, um, get and get a couple of Japanese 112 scale action figures. So figure arts and Mafex. And in this case, I got myself something that I've been wanting for a long time. The Black Series actually released a version of this, um, but I missed out on it. And when I wanted to get it, he was completely overpriced. But it's this guy. Well, duh. Let me fix my camera. Darth Vader, right? But this is the Obi-Wan version. And this one is specific because... Uh, okay, so, sorry. I actually opened it already. So here we have SH Figuarts Obi-Wan version of Darth Vader. And so this one is special. Well, the selling point of this guy, I believe, and at least for me, was you know in the series when Obi-Wan and Anakin and Darth Vader fought and he shattered the helmet and there you see Anakin's face so I missed out on the Black Series version and I really didn't want to spend too much um, for this I mean admittedly cool looking Darth Vader but when in Japan I found this guy at a very decent price he's one of the older ones and found him in Hero Gang so Hero Gang if you're if you want Transformer stuff mainline Transformer stuff there's a whole lot of stuff there probably the most Transformers mainline Transformers I've seen in one place Hero Gang. And yeah, so this was my first purchase. SH Figuarts Darth Vader from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show with shattered helmet, Anakin face, and slash top control panel. And of course, I mean, all, this is all interchangeable. That's not, of course, I wouldn't know why you'd buy this if not to display it this way. But yes, he comes with a, a solid, you know, an intact helmet and, and a working control panel. And hands galore, hand options galore. And another thing I appreciate, the wired cape. Not just the cape, but the, the inner cape is also wired. So very nice. So the next store I went to was this place called Super Kids Land. It, it's in, a, in this huge building. You'll see it down the road. It's a huge tall building with a big sign. And I saw Super Kids Land and I told my wife, hey, maybe we'll find some stuff for the kids there. So we walked a few more steps and we found out that Super Kids Land meant kids like me. And it's in Super Kids Land where I found this dude. Brave Commander Optimus Prime. So like... If you saw my previous video with my primes, I did get him in Japan, but not actually in this store. See, the thing with, at least when I go on trips, um, I don't buy things. Well, we went to Denden Town on the first full day that we had in, in Osaka. And well, basically, I don't buy things in the first day because I want to look around, right? Prices can vary in Japan, like anywhere else. So I wanted to see what was out there, right? And so I saw this guy in Super Kids Land, and but I decided not to get him right then and there, which I ended up regretting because when I came back a couple of days later, the only one that I saw in the store, of course, I, it should have, I should have, you know, realized that it was the only one that the the possibility of it being taken was high. And true enough, when I came back a couple of days later, it was gone, and I was sad. But anyway, um, what happened was, so I throughout the whole trip, Super Kids Land was the only place where I found Brave Commander. Okay, Super Kids Land's got a lot of stuff, a lot of SH Figure Arts stuff. So if you want that, they've got a ton. Um, I think it's the main store of SH Figure. I could be wrong, but I think it's the main SH Figure Arts store. So there's quite a lot. There's also again model. Ro uh, plastic model robots, Gundams, and mainline Transformers. Not much, but there are they are there. So I think it's worth the trip. Again, these are all down one street, just a few minutes away from each other. So if you're here, you just go down. But anyway, so the last store that I went to, another thing you want and you, you keep in mind when it comes to Japan, or at least Osaka and Tokyo, are you got a lot of these big, big chain um, tech stores, tech appliances, you know, that sell laptops, cell phones, tech gadgets and so one of the biggest one is this one called big camera big as in b-i-c camera and they usually have these huge huge buildings uh, multi-level buildings uh, another one to look out for is this one called soft map s-o-f-m-a-p so again ground level all you'll see are a bunch of computers laptops and stuff like that but check out the directory and the directories are there usually by the elevators and more often than not on the fifth or sixth floor you know the higher level floors there's always a, a floor where they sell toys big camera definitely you want to check out so that's where i went next the big camera and there we found brave commander quite a lot of them actually so i had my pick of the litter so i'm happy i got to get my brave commander and what was cool was i didn't realize this but when i when i got to the hotel and i, and I opened up the, the shopping bag they gave me this right they, they threw it in so it's a bunch of i don't know collector cards so prime through the years well Fortress Maximus. I don't know who this guy is. Um, sorry, I'm not a big, I'm not really big into the Japanese Transformers, but yeah, 
So collector cards, cool, and they were free. Um, one thing also, if you're traveling, if you're a foreigner, um, a lot of these mainline uh, stores actually have a uh, tax-free option. So basically what happens is you present to them your passport as proof that you're not a citizen, that you're a, you're a, you're a tourist, and you get additional discounts on your purchases. Uh, if you spend over a specific amount, I think when we were there, well, while we were there, it was 5,000 yen, which isn't really much actually. Speaking of price, okay, so again, one reason why I didn't want to get Brave Commander Optimus Prime initially is because, well, this guy was a Takara release. So no Hasbro version so far. So you basically, aside from pay paying the higher price for a commander class figure, you're also paying for import import prices. Case in point, I believe this guy is still available on Big Bad uh, for around eighty dollars. And here in the Philippines, you can buy him from hobby shops. He was, I think, he was being listed at uh, around. Sixty dollars, uh, around three thousand six hundred pesos, which comes out to about sixty dollars. But this guy, I found him in Japan in retail for about fifty dollars. So great price, right? So another reason why I, I base, I mean, I knew I was, I was going to Japan, so I basically earmarked this guy as a potential purchase. So yeah, he was probably the best thing that I got, the one that I'm most happy about. But there's one more store that I went to, and well, this is something that I think you should really do your research on because. Uh, when you go to Japan, not just in Osaka, but in Tokyo, one of the most popular chains of toy stores is this thing called Mandarake. So they've got branches all over the place. And the thing with Mandarake is they specialize in a lot of secondhand toys, all right? So well, a lot of stores in Japan, actually. But so what my point is, whenever you go, you're always going to find something interesting. There's always going to be something interesting. And in my case, so in Osaka, Mandarake is actually located right next door to Super Kids Land. So let's get to what I found there. So like I said, in Mandarake, um, they specialize in secondhand toys. And in Japan, one thing to take note, usually when you think of secondhand toys, I mean, yeah, I mean, we always buy people's secondhand toys. But in Japan, uh, toy collecting is a little bit more of a serious thing, right, for the adults. And a lot of these secondhand toys are practically brand new. They take care of their stuff. They come in boxes. So like I said, even this, even the Darth Vader, this guy was, I think he was cheaper because he was also secondhand, but I could be wrong. But basically, yeah, um, it's one thing to note in Japan. Don't be turned off by them being previously opened or secondhand because in Japan, it means nothing. These guys are practically brand new. But anyway, that being said, I went to Mandarake and again, you'll never know what you'll find, but basically this is like a really old and random, but okay, I found these two guys. Marvel Legends. So, um, from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, Adam Morlock and Kraglin. So, yeah, random. Um, but the reason why I got them, so case in point, so I saw these guys on sale in Hero Gang. Um, this guy was around selling for around 2,000 yen, and, and this guy was selling for about 3,000 yen. So 5,000 yen in total would be around maybe 2,000 pesos, so that's around $40. So yeah, still a good price, I would think. I mean, it's lower than your typical retail. I know these are old figures, but I still didn't have them, and I, I needed them to, to, to round out my Guardians display. But anyway, I pegged marked these guys as possible purchases. It's a good thing I didn't get them in Hero Gang because I found them in Mandarake. This guy's selling for 1,000. 500 yen and this guy for 1,300 yen. So almost half basically of what I saw across the street or down the street, right? So I found them here. Great price combined mm, around 10, uh, 10,000 pesos. Math on the spot conversion. So that's around $10. If I'm wrong, I'll flash the right price there, but $10 or $20 for these two. Not bad. Not a bad price, right? For both of them. So anyway, that's not what I'm very happy about at what I found in Mandarake. The main thing I found in Mandarake was this dude, Mafex, IG-11 from The Mandalorian. So yeah, so here's what I mean. So you'll see a lot of them. It says, it's our, I mean, they show in the box, it says um, opened or used. But again, it's pristine, basically, basically brand new. And um, if you notice, well, obviously I opened them up. I opened him up already and his harness is here. It's because I didn't buy this guy for IG-11. I, I got the one from Hasbro, the Black Series one, where he's uh, where he's got where he was repaired and his whole chest was turned into a control panel for Grogu. I think he's IG12 at that point. But anyway, I got that for my Mandalorian display. I got this guy for my Bounty Hunters display as IG88. So basically, as a Black Series collector, if you know, you know the original IG88 is one of the most frustrating 
figures that Hasbro has made. Aside from it being obviously sorely undersized, right? Um, his articulation and he's got these really awful like rubber rubberized elbows and stuff which just like deteriorate and fall off but yeah articulation wise it sucks it sucks basically and i figured you know i could get this guy cannibalize him for his strap i i know it might be a little small but yeah it works right and now i have a properly sized ig88 for my bounty hunters so up with the old and in with the new and that pretty much is it right this is my uh, let's fix uh, anakin uh, darth vader this is my very 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 raglan you can stand it's not much but like i said the trip was for the kids and we spent a whole lot of money for the kids and i really didn't have the luxury of time especially traveling with you know kid on a stroller and um, one thing, these stores, the, the, the aisles are really, really tiny. So more often than not, I had to go inside myself and my wife, my superstar wife, stayed outside with the kids waiting on the street. Which fortunately was littered with gashapon, with gashapon machines that kept my older kid entertained. But, yeah. This is my very modest Osaka toy haul. And of course, Squishy Baby. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Until the next trip or the next toy haul. Bye.